Hi viewers, welcome to my channel, Satya Sparkles. This segment is the part three of my capsule title, All That Glitters Is Gold, If Your Mind Says So. The title for this segment is Anger, One Letter Short of Danger. Is it true? The basic question is, is anger good or bad? We'll try to ponder over this question deeply in this segment. Once a patient complained to the doctor, doctor, I get angry quite often. Is there any medicine to solve my problem? Doctor replied, I understand your problem. Let me try to address your problem. Firstly, tell me, how long you have this problem? The patient angrily shouted at the doctor and said, that is none of our business. And he walked away from the scene in hurry. Humor apart, anger is a strong emotion, is instinctual, and many times we have no control over it. We rarely are able to exercise our choice whether we would be angry or not. In Indian context, with particular reference to classical dance, anger is considered as one of the nine rasas called Raudra Rasa. The dominant emotions of anger, resentment, and hostility are depicted for a chosen character of wicked personalities involved in the drama. But it doesn't mean that good, good characters do not show anger with calm and collection, has basic nature, good characters found in epics such as Rama, trying to kill Ravana, and Draupadi, while being humiliated by Duryodhana, are also portrayed by the practice of Rautra Rasa. Fury or rage triggers anger, and it is an ir ir irritable emotion that is exhibited when a person experiences shame, sadness, or defeat. Coming back to the basic question, is anger good or bad? We need to discuss it in from two perspectives. Firstly, is it good or bad for a person experiencing anger? And secondly, how one's anger impacts the other person individually or collectively, the community at large? As medical doctors say, anger can produce ulcers, insomnia, or diseases, and hypertension. If we dig at our human history, irrespective of geographical location, we will note that no major change has ever happened until some, someone was angry at a particular period on a particular issue. When I say major change, I refer to both positive and negative implications, be it French Revolution, Berlin Wall construction or demolition, freedom for a country or was about which we have studied during our school or college days. We all know that when Mahatma Gandhi, the father of the nation for India, was thrown out of the rail compartment in South Africa. He was angry then, for certain. Nevertheless, he channelized anger towards commitment to fight against racial discrimination and determination at a later stage to throw the British out of India, which eventually happened. The next question is, or the next question to address is, can anger be controlled at our will? Before attempting to answer this question, it would be relevant to understand the sources or the science of anger. The science of anger exists in a range. Some are very obvious, others may be very subtle. They differ from person to person. Though, science of anger can be physical, mental, emotional, and behavioral, I have categorized and incorporated the topic anger in emotional chapter because it is predominantly a strong emotion. 
but it's a form of certain energy. People themselves cannot technically anger us. Anger arises as a result of one or many more situations such as sadness, irritability, guilt, resentment, needing to be alone, etc. What people do causes us to decide we're reacting in an angry fashion. It is triggered when our self-esteem is endangered, when our ego is hurt, when we are insulted or deprived of something, and when you are unable to tolerate stupidity and frustration due to not getting what we want and many more. Depending on the individuals, their emotions, circumstances, anger may cause a person to become enraged or even furious. In one instance of a trivial nature, a press reporter threw a shoe at George Bush. During interrogation, he revealed to the police that the mysterious smile of Bush when delivering the speech irritated him and he became instantly angry. Some lash out as an extreme terrorist behavior as in the case of murder of John Lennon. As many of us know, a major controversy erupted in 1966 when John Lennon de- declared that the Beatles were more popular than Jesus. This prompted Mark David Chapman to shoot and kill John Lennon. Other people tend to be defensive or keep their anger to themselves, bottling up their negative emotions and hurt, while some people become reckless and even become abusive. Anger can be a terribly harmful emotion if it is not properly managed. People who become angry behave in different ways as mild as in verbal abuse or inflict minor physical injury or as severe as a murder. What are the negative effects of anger if expressed inappropriately? All of us would have surely experienced few or more negative effects of anger at some point in our life. But what critically matters is the frequency and the intensity of such experiences. To name a few, anger disrupts and distorts our actions and thoughts, impasse judgment and memory. It produces impulsive and undesirable behavior and it leads to unnecessary aggression. It inhibits formation, sustaining and development of relationships. Let us also not forget that prolonged unexpressed anger is more dangerous than smoking and cancer. Thus, anger is the first emotion to be experienced and the last to be controlled. However, it can be effectively managed through certain proven tactics. One tactic that top the list is to walk away from the scene. Any physical movement alters the energy patterns, thus reducing the effects of spiraling angry thoughts. Taking a deep breath a few times helps to nourish our brain with more oxygen. Mental relaxation is the antidote to combat anger. Behavioral scientists say that consciously trying to understand how the other person is responsible for your anger and to be brave in accepting that you may be wrong or you used to be wrong in in the past and similar situation will ease the tension instantly. The same context. Recently, someone gave me a humorous advice. He said, if the person making you uncomfortable is much younger than you, count up to 10. And then speak. If the person is equal to your strength, count up to 30 and speak. If the person is stronger than you, count up to 100 and speak. And if the person is your spouse, just keep counting. Don't stop. This is in lighter sense though, 
it makes a lot of sense when it comes to managing anger. The simple trick here is mind diversion. A powerful gift that God has given to us is our inability to hold on to more than one thought at any point of time. Yes, counting really works. Oftentimes, people tend to magnify situations resulting in needless misery, anxiety, and emotional aspects. To overcome this problem, I frequently use a powerful technique called emotional thermometer. Whenever you confront with a situation which annoys you, imagine that you have a emotional thermometer with a scale from 0 to 10. 0 means everything is going well. There is no undue tension. Then denotes something truly threatening and catastrophic in sustaining a relationship or the situation that endangers your self-esteem very adversely, which needs your demonstration to be assertive. And the next step, which is very tricky and difficult as well, is to peg the situation at the imaginary scale. This will help to calibrate your thoughts to show anger appropriately. It can be usage of words. Remember, the tongue works faster than the mind. And body language, which includes tonality, which means loudness, resonance, and pace, etc. As Osho says, anger is synonymous with sadness. Sadness is passive anger and anger is active sadness. In our emotions, the polarity continues within us. In and yang, anger is male and sadness is female. When anger comes to you, just sit silently and watch it. Don't be against it. Don't be for it. Don't cooperate with it. Don't repress it. Just watch it. Be patient and see what happens. Let it rise. The energy being the same, this patience is added to that. Nothing else. Don't do anything in the mood when the poisoning is possessing you. If you start looking for the forest, ignoring the trees, you will never be able to see the forest. Try the method practiced in Buddhism, namely talking notice thrice. That is, say in your mind was anger, anger, anger three times. Managing anger means challenging our thoughts, accepting and viewing the situation differently and diffusing the intensity. So with regard to anger, don't suppress it. Don't be aggressive. Just express. Anger may be a healthy, normal emotion, but when the anger takes over and induces life, making them destructive and violent, it is a big problem. Not only does the anger destroy the individual, but it also impacts everyone and everything around them. Anger management could change this individual and ensure a healthy, normal life. If you believe that your anger is out of control for a long time and has been a strong cause for strained personal and professional relationship, take external support. A word of caution here, be cautious to seek the right support or help of life coaches and mental health therapists. Remember, inappropriately express anger is an acid that can do more harm to the vessel in which it is stored than to anything on which it is poured. If you like this segment, please subscribe, share, like, comment, and press the bell button. So, thanks for watching. See you soon in my next video. In the meantime, this is Satya signing off. 
Goodbye.